Hi, y'all. So listen, um, Lil Rod has been vindicated in my book and everything is based on opinion. Nothing is factual. I will be reviewing Tisa Tales. She's actually a content creator here on YouTube. And I've been following this P. Diddy case. Um, and so I've actually been watching her videos as well. But what really stuck out to me today was a lot. Y'all give me one second. All right, so give me one second. I'm about to connect my. Okay, so I just connected my mic. So hopefully you all, you all can hear me better now. Like I said, Tisa Tales, she's actually a content creator here on YouTube, and we're gonna review her live tonight. Yeah, um, this is surrounding the P Diddy case. You know, in my opinion, I do feel like Lil Rod is very much so telling the truth. And the reason why I feel like he's telling the truth is because when we think about the history and um, the information that's been placed out for us to dissect, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a lot of details and people I think are so uh, stuck on the fact of, Oh my God, he's a celebrity. He don't have to do this. And let me just say this. Sometimes, and I say sometimes, sometimes when you're in a position, I'm going to say this because I don't know about the position, right? But I'm just thinking if you have a man that is big in the industry, that has all this money, that has all this pull, you know, and he has the public opinion. It's a bit hard to, you know, try to like battle up against him. And I say that financially. See, financially, if you have the means to um, retrieve representation from an attorney, right? And you're a multimillionaire. Listen here. There are ways that you can kind of slide past because there's a saying, money talks, BS walks, you know? Uh, you said, would you rather have, oh my goodness, you are so silly. Okay. Let's go ahead and let's play um, Tisa's video. Okay, so. Okay. At this time, Diddy and Justin disappeared to Studio G across the parking lot from Studio A. So the argument started in Studio A. They went to the bathroom. Bang, bang, bang. Everyone's in a state of shock. Okay, so pretty much what she's explaining right here is 
P. Diddy allegedly, uh, him and his sister, him and his son, Justin, or Christian. I believe it was Christian. It was Christian or Justin, but long story short, one of his one of his sons and him, they were in a studio allegedly out in California, and there was something that happened to where they ended up in the bathroom and a guy named G was, you know, pow pow. A guy was pow pow in the bathroom. And what they are saying, what, what Lorad is saying is um, he was informed and told by Diddy in their camp is to not, you know, don't say that the pow pow happened here. So this is the thing. When you have business relationships with somebody and you're doing your dirt, in front of them and if they see how you move and operate of course they're gonna at least in my opinion would take proper precautions on not getting on your bad side and i think that this is kind of a case of that you know look uh p diddy was out here begging for talent he was asking for talent well Lil Rod showed up and now you got the talent and you got the the job and now you want to discard this man in my opinion i don't know anything to be true but i'm just trying to figure it out just like everyone else let's go ahead and listen to tisa tales little rod is trying like literally this is something out of a movie this ambulance wouldn't come onto the lot because they thought it was still an active shooting he had to go and run down the street blood everywhere to convince an ambulance to come into diddy and justin went to studio chase Diddy gave strict instructions to inform the police that he had nothing to do with the shooting. He also forced me to lie to the police by telling them that G was shot standing outside the studio by a drive-by assailant. Now, oddly enough, this is what Diddy told them to tell the police. Sean Hawley, Diddy's lawyers, and y'all want to talk about lawyers, said that it happened blocks away. Tell a studio said it happened a block and a half away. Sean Hawley, I believe, said it happened three blocks away. I have the video of the restroom where G was located, and it clearly shows all the blood that G lost as a result of being shot. Mind you, he was shot in the abdominal and through the hip and ear area. Chalice Studios and Sean Hawley wants to let us think that a man that was shot in the stomach and the leg, hip leg area, walked three blocks gushing blood, walked to the front of Chalice Studios. If you guys don't know, when you get to Chalice Studios, because they're always paranoid about that, you can't even walk straight to the door. You have to be buzzed in with the security camera to ask to come on. Okay, so let me talk about that. So this, these are allegations of the gentleman, Lil Rod. They're saying, okay, well, we were at, you know, the studio or whatever, and something happened, something went on. Something happened, something went on. He's given his version of what happened. He's letting us know, hey, what they were saying, that's, that's not true. You know? And speaking of, let's go ahead and listen to this recording right here. He stays, he stays in the conversation. What's up, T? What's going on, my man? How you feeling? How you yeah. crazy? I'm on a love frequency. But you know, I got a mean, toxic side to me. <laughs> and I'll be throwing that Playboy on. I can leave that bitch on and repeat. Nah, I think let it really do its thing. For sure. Man, that's crazy. Is that, you know, um, out of my R&B artists, um, that that I don't know if people would, would know that you are one of my favorite R&B artists. Wow, that that's a... That's what I'm listening to in the crib when I'm getting... You know what I'm saying? When I'm doing my thing and, you know what I'm saying, with my lady, when I'm just, mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah, for sure. When I'm, the, when I'm in that vibe, and everybody got to start front. When they get in that vibe, they know they go 
get some of that Tory Lanez. Tory Lanez got a good six joints on 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 the smashing playlist. Now look. That three years ago god okay so this is the part that i want y'all to hear remember when puff daddy or p diddy was out here begging for talent he was begging for talent he said god sent him and 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 he went on and on so eventually i want to say this Lil rod end up showing up so he prayed and he prayed on the right one because when LaRod showed up, LaRod had that phone. He had recordings. Let's get it. Let's go. Made my mission and my purpose clear. And my mission and my purpose is to do whatever and play whatever role that I have to play into saving the black race, number one. And number two, to making sure that everybody of all colors, all backgrounds, all creeds, all nationalities, all get this we all get the same 24 hours not just one race not just another race not just one gender not another we all get the same 24 hours but i'm fighting this fight and to other people it's an impossible dream. it's not impossible it's going to happen we're going to make progress and change the world but i can't do it alone and i know there's people that feel just like me that are out there that are talented that's probably working for google or nike or working for bigger corporations that have a track record and have an experience at the level that I'm playing at. I'm not coming to just compete. I'm coming to win. I'm going to fucking buy Disney for us. Okay. So if you are one of these unicorn executives, please send me your resumes and your portfolios to God's work. Cause I'm doing God's work. You're doing God's work. God's work at combsglobal.com. I'm doing the biggest human resources investment from the top level of CMOs to COOs to general managers, down to creative directors, down to creative producers. The list is so long, fashion designers. Below is the list. Please, please, God told me to ask y'all for help. I need your help. I need your help. I can't do it alone. I'm overwhelmed. I'm going crazy. I need talented people around me, the greatest around me. God, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you, please to send me some like-minded, like-frequency individuals that want to change this world. Love, please. Love. All right. So now that we heard that, I want to, he's, I want y'all to, um, Go with me here because P. Diddy said that he wanted to buy Disney for us. Well, let me tell you the history behind Disney. Whoa! TikTok, y'all see this? Hold on, let me pick myself down to a little guy. Disney in the news, and they're saying that a four-year-old girl came up missing. But wait till you hear how she came up missing according to the parents. Now, this article right here says a four-year-old girl went missing in Disneyland in Los Angeles as reported in the TikTok video raised the concerns and sparking a digital frenzy about the mysterious incident. Let me tell you. Now, we don't have a picture of the family or the kid. This happened to a Latino family, so the whole situation was told in their language. But through all the interpreters on TikTok, this is what they're saying happened. So this family, who was a Latino descent, said they went to this bathroom and saw a trap door similar to this opened up and that their daughter was down in there. They said the door closed and they went to run and reported to security guards. They thought they was crazy. They said they would, that they need to dig up this place in the bathroom and they try, they try to get these people to open this floor up so they can find their daughter. The daughter is still missing. Now they have, these people have to go see psychiatrists because they're sticking to their story that their baby went to a hole in the floor similar to this at Disneyland in Los Angeles. And it's all over TikTok right now. Excuse me. <coughs> It's all over TikTok right now, and y'all need to y'all need to go check it out for yourselves because this looks extremely convincing. And you see, this is a real thing. The floor is opened up and trap doors to a now. Look at that. That looks perfect in line and don't. Yeah. <laughs> I've been freaking trying to get out of here for the last like 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. No, I just freaking tried to go to the bathroom and I found myself in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, you freaking, oh, guess. It's my card. Um, let me get Carol to help me. Yeah. 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 Ye
Okay. How did you get back in? <laughs> just open a random door, and next thing you know, I'm in here. What is that? Man, talking about stairwell after door after sheesh. What is this place? Whoa. What is this? This big empty area in here. Hello, can you help me? Here. I don't know what is going on at Disneyland, but these stories that have emerged in the last four days are something straight out of a nightmare. There are two separate stories that have taken place at Disney World in the last four days that are both very hellish and seem to show another side of Disney World. And one of these stories was on a completely different side of TikTok where everyone is speaking Spanish. So it literally took me two days to decipher what was going on. The other story was literally of a man losing his shit at Disney World, but the way that this man looks and his appearance gives a whole other story entirely. However, it seems that Disney is using one story to cover up the other. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of That's Insane with Aja. Today we're gonna to be talking about something that is going on in Disney World that has been unrevealing itself in the last four days. So this is the first story that was on a whole opposite side of TikTok about this four-year-old child that was said to have gone missing at a Disney World theme park and when her parents found her in the bathroom, what they saw was crazy in its entirety. Now, to be clear, that is not the actual young lady. That is just a representation of her that someone made to tell the story. This is said to be the actual four-year-old child that her parents said let go to the bathroom by herself. And when they went to get her, they said they saw a tunnel opening in the restroom from the floor and their daughter was being taken. This is the original missing poster that people are sending around on the other side of TikTok. And apparently this young child's name is Audrey Elizabeth. The parents were asked to give a description of what they saw when this four-year-old child went missing. And this is the description that they gave. And it was up a trap door in the floor or the wall that opened up and the child was behind. This is the video that is going around and it's said to be a representation of what they saw, not the actual video. What is so crazy is that the mother asked the workers at Disneyland to break into the floor and they denied to break ground to look for this child. Now, this is the video that people are saying is supposedly the mother talking to security, trying to get them to look for her daughter and they will not look for her. I'm not sure if this is the real video, but again, if you understand Spanish or you hold and click translate, it translates to this being the mother that is of the missing four-year-old child. Now, for those of you who are unaware about the tunnel system that runs through Disneyland for the characters to go through, because they don't want to ruin the fantasy and have multiple characters seen in different places, this is the actual tunnel system, so I don't deny anything happened. Next, there is this man that has gone rogue at Disney World, and there are multiple videos of him climbing into the actual props at Disney World in the water naked, and to me, it feels like a cover-up for the missing child. Because we all know when someone is on the forefront or a company is on the forefront, damage control is always to distract. However, this man looks so malnourished, confused, and he seems to be there alone, which is weird in itself because who goes to Disneyland with no family or no kids? So who's to say that this man was not being kept captive at Disney World and finally got free and started to do these bizarre things that I'm going to show you? This is a video of the man you see him up there, literally on the Disney props. If you look at this man, he looks very confused and bewildered, as well as really, really small, which to me makes me think that he might be malnourished or he could just be extremely fit. Either way, the look in his eyes, he really does look terrified and unaware of what is going on, which does not make sense at a Disneyland theme park, considering people go there with the intention to see rides, have fun, see their favorite Disney characters, and they usually go in a group. So why is no one stopping this man or why is he alone? Here is another video of the gentleman. If you look at him, he looks very confused. And in this, he looks super skinny. There are his clothes, which are very dirty and tattered. So I'm unsure why he is there in the first place or where he came from. In my opinion, one or two things happen. He escaped from one of those tunnels under Disneyland or he was put out there as a front to distract the media and people from what is really going on with that missing child. I don't know. What do you guys think? 
Thanks for tuning in to another episode of That's Insane with Aja, and I'll see you guys next time. Right. So there we have it. When Diddy says, "I was missing a few," is this how? I want. I want to play this one more time. So, hey, Wani One One, I want to play this one more time because P Diddy said that he wanted to buy Disney. So I'm opening this chapter up to let y'all know what happens at Disney. When we think about the the charges and the allegation, well, the allegations surrounding P Diddy and his son, and then you know you got the ex trafficking. Let's talk about it. I'm going to play this audio one more time. This is with P. Diddy talking with Tory Lanez. And then he's going to give his real spill on why he wants to get Disney. He stays, he stays in the conversation. What's up, T? What's going on, my man? How you feeling? How you yeah. crazy? I'm on a love frequency. But you know I got a mean, toxic side to me. <laughs> and I'll be throwing that Playboy on. I can leave that bitch on and repeat. Nah, I think let it really do its thing. For sure. And that's crazy. Is that, you know, um, out of my R&B artists, um, that, that I don't know if people would, would know that you are one of my favorite R&B artists. Wow. That, that's a, that's what I'm listening to in the crib when I'm getting, when, you know what I'm saying? When I'm doing my thing and, you know what I'm saying? With my lady, when I'm just, Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ah, for sure. When I'm, in, when I'm in that vibe, and everybody we got to start front. When they get in that vibe, they know they go get some of that Tory Lane. Tory Lane's got a good six joints on, on, on the smash and playlist. Now, look. That- All right. Now he's about to confess. And then he's going to let y'all know about Disney World. And he want to buy it. So three years ago, God made my mission and my purpose clear. And my mission and my purpose is to do whatever and play whatever role that I have to play into saving the black race, number one. And number two, to making sure that everybody of all colors, all backgrounds, all creeds, all nationalities, all get this. We all get the same 24 hours, not just one race, not just another race, not just one gender, not another. We all get the same 24 hours. But I'm fighting this fight. And to other people, it's an impossible. It's not impossible. It's going to happen. We're going to make progress and change the world, but I can't do it alone. And I know there's people that feel just like me that are out there that are talented, that's probably working for Google or Nike or working for bigger corporations that have a track record and have an experience at the level that I'm playing at. I'm not coming to just compete. I'm coming to win. I'm going to fucking buy Disney for us. Okay. So if you are one of these unicorn executives, please. Now, remember, he just said that he wanted to buy Disney, right? Missing a few days ago at Disneyland in Los Angeles, California. Hello, I'm Lee, a four-year-old girl. It all happened on the afternoon of October 12th. I was playing with my mom in the amusement park, and when we stopped to eat, I asked for her permission to go to the restroom. Minutes later, my mom realized I was taking longer than usual. She decided to come to the restroom to find me and witnessed a terrifying scene, a man taking me through a tunnel that opened in the restroom floor. When she entered, the tunnel's door was already closing. My mother, shocked, reported the situation to the authorities, but no one believed her. The police inspected the restroom, finding no signs of secret doors or tunnels. The Disney park managers provided surveillance footage to the police, portraying my mother as if she were acting insane, leading many to believe she is mentally ill. Regarding my case, both the park and authorities refrained from commenting on my disappearance. However, it is widely known that Disney parks have secret tunnels and passages used daily by employees, and over 30 Disney employees have been accused and jailed in history. Talk about that. Now, why would he want to buy Disney? Why would he want to buy Disney? I'm not sure, but let's get back over to Tisa Tales so she can finish with his lawsuit. 
on the grounds. Then once you come on the grounds, you have to walk to the front door, ask to be buzzed in again. Security is looking down on you. Then okay, so she's talking about the the Los Angeles studio, that little ride. P. Diddy and his son, they were at. And there's a guy named G that was supposed to be piled in the bathroom. Where is G? Nobody can find G. Let's go. Then when you get in, there's nothing but a secretary sitting behind bulletproof glass. You then have to tell them what session you're with. They call back to the session, get permission, get your ID and stuff, get permission to let you back. Then they buzz you in, you walk in, there is a huge lounge sitting area, right? You walk past that, then you see Studio A and you see Studio B, you walk past that, there's a kitchen area, and you walk past that and there is a bathroom area. They're trying to say, right? They're trying to say that a man walked three blocks, shot like that, walked in, got buzzed in, went through all that security. Just so they could bleed out? Yeah, okay. All right. Maybe. Maybe. Well, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. If they have all this security, and this is at a studio, why didn't security call the police? Where did the 911 call come from? Anyway, um, I have several Ryder Camp attendees who are willing to provide the court with a sworn statement corroborating what I witnessed and experienced at Chalice Recording Studios. He is also telling the court under penalty of perjury. This is him swearing to God to the court. A sworn declaration is testimony. They can, again, do all this stuff. What he experienced and witnessed at the recording studio. Now. What's Diddy, what, what's Diddy's camp got to say? Oh, but his lawyer lost the case. Baby, y'all all lost cases. So, okay. Anyway, now he goes into uh, the next thing. Blank workers. Oh, he also put up a photo. Let me put this on the screen. He also has a photo of this. He put this in evidence put this on a big screen he said that this photo this is actually included in court evidence again this is new evidence this, it was not included in the original uh filing this a lot of this is new information he's adding meat to the bones of what he put in that complaint he said this photo was taken shortly before the shooting it was taken shortly before the shooting mm. again chalice recording studios remember how ethiopia haberman was like what are you talking about? I've only been in the studio with Diddy, trying to make it seem like studios in Diddy's house are so professional. Studios is where half the mess happens because Diddy likes that mess. Okay, let's get into this. Now he's moving on to, it's Christmas time. Now he's moving on. To now listen, this is um, Lil Rod. This is the new lawsuit that, I mean, the new details um, coming out. against P. Diddy. In the first lawsuit, he included photos. He included uh, audio. I, I believe he just, I believe he um, put just photos in there, but he did mention that he had audio. To blank workers, parties, and excessive drug use. They said Diddy converted the parking lot at Chalice Recording Studios into a makeshift nightclub. He had everything imaginable there including a full service bar, a massage spa, and a hookah. You think that's where Daphne was working? <laughs> Every evening, Diddy would host a party called Club Love, and there would be all the attendees of the writer's camp, the artists, and the record label executives. In addition to Club Love, right? And he said, record label executives. As much as UMG is like, how dare you? There's proof. Anyway. In addition to Club Love, Diddy required everyone working on the I Love album to take lace shots of De Leon tequila. There was no way to tell him no. Diddy felt anyone who refused to drink with him was suspicious. 
and untrustworthy. So he was already testing to see who was feds, who was going to snitch. You couldn't stay around him without drinking the lace tequila. At the time, I did not realize that he used to lace the shots of alcohol to obtain and maintain control over the person consuming the alcohol. So what Little Rod is now saying is, okay, I didn't know that it was laced. However, anyone that wouldn't take a shot of De Leon tequila, Diddy, again, uh, was suspicious of and untrustworthy. Diddy was not the only person who pressured everyone to take shots. His chief of staff, KK, and her direct reporters, DeForest Taylor, Frankie Santella, and a &R for Love Records, Brendan Paul, and Moy Bond did so as well. Throughout the duration of his time living with Diddy, I personally witnessed Diddy order his staff to bring him rugs and blank workers. This Whoa. Y'all, this gets deep. So there are laced beverages. You have to drink it or you're the feds or you're not working. You know what I'm saying? Like you're working against us. And then if he has the thought that you're working against him, just imagine what could happen to you. Let's go. This was common. And he was never told no. On several occasions while in Miami, I was required to order blank workers from blank clubs in Miami, Florida. I would have to send the blank workers Ubers to Diddy's property located on Two Star Island in Miami, Florida. I'm in possession of many Uber receipts. Now listen, when this man is saying, hey, I, I was told to do this, he's taking orders. And a lot of people are upset at Lil Rod, but Lil Rod is actually a blessing because just let's just think about how many alleged women coming behind, you know, got prevented from encountering something. Let's go. He's in, he's in possession of Uber receipts, you guys. He has Uber receipts. On several occasions, I witnessed Brendan Paul, that is the man that the feds actually arrested for possession and charged him with possession of Colombian dancing dust and Colombian dancing dust laced gummies. And this is what little Rod, he says, I witnessed Brendan Paul pack coca, Tusi, E, Mary Jane, lace candies with marijuana and other substances in his carry-on luggage. When so this is the dude that got arrested, the mule that's attached to P. Diddy that had the rugs on him. Y'all can, you know, know what I'm saying. He had the rugs on him in that little pouch. This is what she's speaking on. Whenever we had to travel internationally or to other states. Throughout my time with Diddy, I was transported from California to New York, St. Uh, Bartholomew and Virgin. During this time, I was forced to solicit blank workers and perform blank acts to the pleasure of Diddy. Unbeknownst to me, Diddy had hidden cameras and audio devices in all the rooms of his home. I only discovered this several months into living with him when I had to pick up my Uber Eats delivery from the security office. Usually the security would bring my food deliveries to me whenever I was at Diddy's home. But at this point, I was close and familiar with the security. So they called me to their room and told me to go in and retrieve the food myself. I saw a four to six, I saw four to six large flat screen television monitors at the time. Each monitor had at least 20 to 30 little screens in them. Each screen. Oh my goodness. Imagine going to a friend's house. Okay, hold on. Wani one one says, "I wonder if Kim P had any of his alcohol before she passed." That's a good question. What are the side effects for mixing those things together? How long will it last in her system? If so, that's a good question. Because Claudia Jordan had come out and said that her she's very friend she's very close friends with Albie Shore, and she said that um, allegedly you know when they opened up Albie Shore it was like liquid something. So when we talk about lacing, it's I don't know how to do it, and I don't want to know how to do it. 
but I would like information on what to look for, you know? So we might have to have our investigation team, you know, deep dive into that. What, what, what do you look for um, to prevent, you know, taking something that's laced? You know, is there a smell? Is there a look? I mean, that's a good question. Thank you, Wani11. Keep them coming, honey. With the view of the room in and surrounding Diddy's home. You guys. So listen, what she just said was P. Diddy, she said Rodney Jones went to a room to speak with Diddy or whatever. And when he went to the room, he seen about six flat screen TVs with it was like a it was it was a camera board. If y'all know what a camera board is, like if you ever go to a, a, a hotel and they have all those cameras like sitting right there on that computer. Well, Diddy had six flat screens with images of camera motions on it. Allegedly, he has cameras and audio in each and every room of the house. I tagged Tisa Tales. So if you guys don't want to like hear me keep stopping. You can go over and watch the full video. Her name is Tisa Tales. Actually, what I do is I'll flip it around so y'all can see where I'm getting my information from. Her name is Tisa Tales. That's her channel right there. T-I-S-A-T-E-L-L-S. -L -L the name of this video is Shocking New Info. Lil Rob Vindicated Drops More Receipts. Uh, Diddy didn't see this coming. Oh, we forgot to like it. We got our like in for today. So this is what we're watching, okay? Diddy's camp is trying to act like this is normal. You got four to six large flat screen TVs. Each monitor has 20 to 30 different scenes going on. So each monitor showed 20 to different to 20 to 30 uh, cameras monitoring rooms. Each screen has a view of the room in and surrounding Diddy's homes. On the following occasions, I was forced to solicit different blank workers and bring them to Star Island. Listen to the dates he gave. November 29, 2022. November 30th, 2022. Uh, December 1st, 2022. December 2nd, 2022. December 3rd. December 6th. January 26th. Because they was in uh, St. Martin's in those days in between. January 27th. January 28th, uh, 2023. January 29th. January 30th. January 31st. The, uh, February 1st, February 2nd, February 4th, February 5th, February 8th, February 9th, April 1st, April 4th. He likes doing uh, free calls at the beginning of the month. It gets new words to the thing. Wake up, wake up. It's the first of the month. So get up and pizza. Okay, anyway, right? Um, 445 and So listen, you all. What she's doing is she's reading off the dates that Lil Rod had to reach out and get Ubers for the S workers for Diddy. This was his assignment. These are his words. This is how he feels, right? These are, these are his experiences. Only thing we can do is just listen and, you know, give our thoughts on it. You know, like I said, we don't know anything to be true or not. We're just here to give an opinion. And five eight two thousand and twenty three. Um, hold on, really quick, you guys. I just got. It. Well, you know, I'll change it later. No, I actually want to change it now. Uh, one second. Can I change it now? I just want to put in little. Cause listen. Let's see. One second. All right, y'all, give Diddy. her one second. She's trying to get everything settled. One second. Okay. So, listen, why she does that, I'm just going to go on, on over here and add a little music, okay? Add a little music. Oh my gosh. Give me one second, y'all. All right, there we go. The challenges. Okay, so anyway, let's keep going. I just changed the title. Sorry I made you guys sit through that, but you had to. Okay, anyway, 
For example, on July 2nd, 2023, Diddy had a listening party at his California home. There were a lot of people present for this party, including Chris Brown, Justin Combs, blank workers and underage girls. Justin would typically bring the younger women to these parties. I had two videos of two different blank workers that just- So Justin was bringing young girls to the party. So it was Justin allegedly. This is what Lorada is saying. Justin Combs bought with them the child's recording studios. I can provide the videos to the court. This event began at 7. Diddy requested female blank workers and required me to solicit them. An hour later, several blank workers appeared. In addition to blank workers, there were at least five women in the crowd who appeared to be under the age of 16. Diddy forced all the attendees to drink the Lace Daily on liquor. I believe Diddy laced the liquor with E. I personally witnessed his staff members, Brendan Paul and Moy Bond, lace alcohol with E. The presence of what I perceive, the presence of what I perceived to be underage women made me very uncomfortable. I attempted to leave and Diddy forced me to stay. I had my car keys in my book bag. I've never lost my car keys. And Diddy went so far as to take my car keys to prevent. Listen, he said, you're going to stay here. Oh, no, 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 no. This is a party. And it's my party. We saw how he pulled uh, Chris Brown up on that on that big old bed that was outside. Chris Brown didn't want to get up there. He was forced. So I want y'all to see how did he act when he wants you to do something. When he wants you to do something, this is what happens. Okay, here, let me uh, switch this around. Okay, so let me show you. This is how Diddy acts when he when he's just very forceful. He's very forceful. Look, he's over there pulling Chris Brown up. Chris Brown didn't want to come up. Chris Brown finally comes up. You see him grabbing on Chris Brown? I mean, he about to shake it up. Look. Chris Brown wanted to go. He was tired. He's ready to go. Leave him alone. Just leave him alone. Look at this. That's how he is at the parties. Somebody don't want to party. Oh, he's going to grab on you. He's going to, you know, do the most. He's like the worst. Like, it's like he's, he's on cloud nine right now. Like, what was he on? Just recently, Ali from the Lunatics had fell out with Nelly over him trying to push his liquor on Ali's daughter, who was at Nelly's event as a model. I don't trust any rapper owned alcohol anymore. Suspiciously forceful. You see that? I want y'all to see this. Get into this. So when we think about Lil Rod, let's look about Chris Brown. Chris Brown comes up in the lawsuit. Look at this, y'all. We're not making this up. Did he? Uh, Chris Brown thought he was giving him a handshake. He's like, no, nah, dude, I ain't trying to get up. Come on up here. Get on up here. Get on up here. Look, you better get on up here. I got that tape. See how he's just manhandling him? And then in bed, too. He's being manhandled in bed. Dude in that hoodie, he already know what it is. He better, You better start bouncing. You better act like you're doing something. Or he gonna come over there and mess with you. Look at him. Look. I wanna watch that one more time. See old dude back there with his hands in his pocket. He know what time it is. Every time did he look at him, he acting like he doing something. Look, look now he acting like he doing something. He went back there and put something down. He got his hands in his pocket. Okay. He's acting like he's having a good time. Hands still in that pocket. What is going on? He grabbing himself. What's all that? 
Listen, y'all, we got a question at. Is this how he is at every party? The girl ain't even worried. She knows Diddy don't want her. Exactly. She wasn't bothered. She was like, girl, we here as props. You know, they waiting for alleged girl. Let me not say that. The girl they wait for uh Mary J. Blige. Okay. They say she and the women allegedly. I don't know. That's a swingers bid. If I've never, if I've ever seen one, you know what? Let me turn it back around because yes, that is a swingers bed. I've been to a swingers party before and it's just white sheets and it's those mattresses. Oh my goodness. That is a swingers bed. Everybody gets on. See at a swingers place, trigger warning, allegedly fair use commentary fair use but yeah at a swingers place they have like those little mats they have the um a mattress they have the sheets and stuff and it's like they're in a you know they're in one big room but given it this it's outside if you want to get your free call you just get up on that bed they got the nightstands out there and everything but they wouldn't get no shut eye come on now all right, let's go ahead and um, take a listen to what Tisa says. She, um, she's she got the receipts. That's one thing I can do is depend on her. And we might review another one of her videos tonight because I did kind of get behind. And for our late night people that maybe don't feel like going to sleep right now, baby, me neither. So we can, we can jam together. Me from leaving. After being forced to drink daily on shots, I began feeling lightheaded and I passed out. I remember waking up at 4 a.m. the following morning, naked with a blank worker sleeping next to me. On February 2nd, Diddy blinked, well, he said rug me. I remember waking up naked, dizzy, and confused. I was in bed with two workers and Diddy. I recall aimlessly wandering around the house with no clothes on. I have photos of the blank workers sleeping on the bed the morning after. I can provide it to the court as necessary. I know Ty Bro Brockbaum was like, I, I, uh, uh, Sean Harley said what? Uh, Jonathan Davis said what? Uh, what? Uh, Diddy said what? I know he is sitting there being like, y'all can't be it. Now I see why they're just taking the thing where they're like, let them keep talking because, baby, the court of public opinion ain't going to save you. Now, peep this out. Peep this out. Diddy has big attorneys, right? If Diddy is innocent, why don't he go to court? Why don't he just go to court? If he didn't do any of this, if none of this was said, done, why not go to court? Go to court, did he? You, you're innocent. You didn't do anything. You didn't do anything. Show up in court. Show up in court, sweetheart. At all. He said, did he offer me Colombian dancing desk on Thanksgiving night? Damn, on Thanksgiving? Did he? Uh, at Diddy's home in Miami, he asked me and DeForest Taylor to enter. Now, listen, this is Thanksgiving night. The only thing that I'm trying to stuff is that turkey. Put all the, the, the bell peppers, the onions and all that. I'm not trying to get my turkey stuffed, if you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying? Thanksgiving night. This is the day that you're supposed to give, give thanks. You know, you be with family and things like that. That's how some people celebrate it. But unfortunately, what Lil Rod allegedly experienced, uh, Wani One One says, it screams, in the words of Jaguar Wright, sue me if I'm lying. You know what? I'm going to read that again. It screams, in the words of Jaguar Wright, sue me if I'm lying. Great point, Wani One One. Great point. Because if none of this happened, why why are you going to court? Why aren't you settling like you did with um Cassie? 
And listen, we didn't even get all this from Cassie, baby. Only thing we got was that lawsuit was filed. <laughs> and then we found out in 24 hours, honey, mother was paid. What's the tea? Diddy? I guess Tisa Tell is going to give us the tea. Come on, Tisa, what you say? The bathroom in the studio. Uh -huh. He asked us for a $100 bill because he wanted us to do Colombian dancing. That's what I was definitely afraid. I could have been too. Luckily, Me too. I did not Me have three. a $100 bill. Did he wait a little later to do co uh, Colombian dancing dance with young Mike? Now listen, the Colombian dancing dance, y'all. You know, you sniff it, you know. That's what she's talking about. Let's go. Miami. On different occasions, Diddy often required me to solicit blank workers from the booby trap on the river. They gave the address, 3615 Northwest South River Drive, Miami. I did this, I did as he asked, and Diddy forced me to engage in unsolicited blank acts with these workers. Diddy personally trained me on how to solicit blank workers from the booby trap on the river. I have a recording of that evening. And combined combi Y'all. <laughs> He says that he has a recording of that evening. If this is not saying I have evidence and I'm ready to take this to court, I don't know what other way to, uh, uh, to, to, to interpret that to anybody. Lil Rod said that he was there to help P. Diddy on a project. Not everybody is gay. Not everybody is into all that. And I wish people would stop trying to push that on everybody. Stop trying to push your sexuality on somebody. And when I say that, you don't, you don't, you don't come on to nobody like that. If somebody is straight and you know that they straight, leave them alone. Leave them alone. I think it's an invasion of privacy. And I think that it makes it uncomfortable for the heterosexual community to engage uh, with the with the LGBTQIA plus community because you have people out here pushing up on them. You know what I'm saying? Let's be real. I pray he is protected too. He's seeing a lot, but Tyrone Blackburn, listen here, Tyrone Blackburn may have lost a few cases in the past, but I think with trial and error, I think that old boy is doing a marvelous job on this lawsuit. They have a lot of evidence, but they gonna slow feed you. They gonna slow feed you with it. And then the tactic that Diddy and his lawyers are taking, oh, he's out here trying to embarrass us. Baby, you weren't embarrassed when you were trying to pull Chris Brown up in that bed. Let's go, Tisa, come on. Can't provide it to the court. In addition to providing me with training, Diddy gave me an exclusive bad boy baseball cap and required me to wear it to the booby trap on the river as a signal to any blank worker I approached that Diddy was in town and it sent me to recruit them. Mm. Listen here. In my opinion, with that piece of information, if he still got that hat, only thing he got to do is go out there, stand on the block and have somebody record him. Boom, there you go. Boom, there you go. If we really want to put the facts to it, but I'm pretty sure he's not going to get out there and do it. But I would say, you know, if he's got security and everything, get on out there, put the hat on and see who come walking up to you and interview them, police. Let's go. He said he didn't want to visit Booby Trap on the river. I had no desire to solicit blank workers from them. Did he use his power and influence to intimidate and force me to do it? He going down. Unbeknownst to me, these workers were, accom were accustomed to servicing Diddy, and would know he was in town by the sight of the bad boys baseball cap. Bad boys baseball cap. No, this is gonna be easy. The feds are just gonna subpoena those girls and make them testify, or they gonna be sitting in jail. Um, Diddy promised me many things to entice me to continue engaging in his blank trafficking operation. Y'all know he promised uh, two hundred fifty thousand, all the instruments he wanted, ownership of this property. Ah, da 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 da. He promised to give me access to record label executives like Lucian Grange and Ethiopia. On multiple occasions, Diddy hosted parties at his home in LA and Miami. Many music label executives from Universal Music Group and Motown Records were present. Some of the other organizations 
uh, represented were Apple Music and Spotify, who were at Diddy's home in April 2023 for the listening party and the after a party. He goes into the stuff with Young Miami's cousin. Um, uh, oh, Divi, did he use my abbreviation for producer Stevie J to groom me into accepting Blake? I have nothing against individuals who are members of the LGBTQ community. I have family members, friends, da 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 da. I'm hetero male, and I made the point very clear to Diddy. Diddy would always do things to convert and, and covert in overt ways to see if I'm open to having blank with them, aside from physically assaulting me, uh, groping my private parts. Uh, Diddy showed me a video of uh, Stephen Aaron. <laughs> They gave Stevie J's, Stevie J's whole Christian name. They said Stephen Aaron Jordan. Penetrating. Caucasian, man. Stevie was part of the Bad Boys production team. Hitman, they worked, he worked for over 30 years. He produced many hit songs, won a Grammy, blah, 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 blah. As a young producer, I admired Stevie. Da, 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 da. He's saying he used Stevie in an effort to groom and make him engaged in lewd acts. Uh, Diddy went so far as to share a video of who he claimed to be Stevie. Bah, 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 bah. He said, uh, he said the thing, he said, the person in the video looked like and sounded like Stevie J. I honestly believed it was him. Now, here's the funny thing. He said Diddy showed him that video. You remember when all the raids said that they took everybody's cell phones and all the computers and disk drive and stuff? Remember how they say Diddy keeps all these tapes he has? If that tape of Stevie J is real, the Fed should have got it because I doubt that Diddy deleted the uh, tape. Now, I do want to say this, right? I doubt Diddy deleted the tape. I do want to say this, though, right? Um, Stevie J is standing by his man. Uh, da -da 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 -da. He said, during my time living with Diddy, I personally witnessed, oh, he said, that it was a normal practice in the music industry. Look, even Stevie J is doing it. He said he personally witnessed these men in the entertainment industry and others visit his house and disappear into his bedroom for hours. Several of these men own record labels and have notable catchphrases like, and another one, and Maybach Music. I can provide those names at the court's request. Wait, who's Maybach Music? Is that Mark Ross? And another one, is that DJ Khalid? Oh, gosh. Okay. He talks about Cupid going junior. Where are we at? The distribution. Okay. So it goes into the distribution. We're going to skip over that. All right. So let's get up into this. Let's talk about it. Because she had brought up some important facts of, I think that we had spoken on that a little bit earlier about, <clears throat> you know, that man was, you know, he's straight and, you know, this man had come up on him. You know, that man said, you know, he felt like Diddy was trying to make a move, you know, and he, he didn't swing that way. You know? Let's talk about it. Just imagine you are working and you're doing what you're supposed to do. And then, boom, out the blue, you're being groped in Samo. What do y'all think? What do y'all think? All right, let's go. We'll come back to it. I want to get into this. Did he buy some? He does not pay for anything. Throughout my time living with Diddy, he made it clear that he did not spend his money on anything. He made it clear he had partnerships and relationships with very powerful individuals and organizations. And these individuals and organizations funded his lifestyle. So Diddy admitted he was broke. 
Diddy told me that he had a long-standing relationship with UMG, Lucian Charles Grange, and Ethiopia Haberman. He shared that he was creating love records. He informed Ethiopia and other label executives like L.A. Reid, um, that saying Lucian, that Diddy intended to partner with L.A. Reid and his label, Hitco, but L.A. Reid informed him that he was negotiating the sale of the label. Diddy told me Ethiopia and Motown were a second option. Diddy informed me that he met Lucian Grange in Ethiopia to negotiate the terms of the partnership. Diddy told me that Lucian and Ethiopia agreed to partner with them to establish Love Records. As part of the partnership, they agreed to distribute the first and second albums. He informed me that UMG paid for Club Love, Chalice Recording Studios, and The Yacht, which he charted from December 22nd to January 23. Little Rod says his attorney, that's I guess Tyrone Blackburn, informed him that UMG claims that they had a distribution deal with Diddy and that they... All right, let's get into this. <clears throat> um, Wani one says, I wonder did Stevie and Faith get married so she can't testify against him? If she knows the way he plays with Diddy. Listen, when you when you talk about the Faith Evans and Stevie J, it makes me feel like, do they all know what happened to Biggie? Now that's the question right there. Who are you loyal to? That's the question. Who are y'all loyal to? So we don't have Biggie's, we don't have Christopher Wallace no more. Listen here. In my opinion, from observation and watching this situation, thank you, Tisa Tales, because you know what? That's why it's so important to just listen sometimes because you find out a lot. Now, we got to put Stevie J, P. Diddy, and Faith Evans up. What happened to that man? What happened to that man? And then we got to throw Tupac in the situation. Because wasn't Faith up there snapping photos? Who's your loyalty to? Now that's the question. Uh, Wani One One says, "You know when someone is flirting with you, and yes, it is uncomfortable when they force themselves uh, on you. Flirting and being under the influence doesn't give you a pass to violate someone exactly. That part, yep, yeah. Now, I'm gonna be going on a, another. Hold on, let me write that down." Listen here, we're going to dissect that, baby. Thank you so much for giving me that piece of wisdom. We're definitely going to be dissecting that, huh? Mm -hmm. Let's go. Agreed to pay them for any approved invoices for the creation of Love Album. I have to disagree with UMG statements because Diddy never paid me or several producers I know who work on the Love Album. Y'all, Diddy is going down. So he don't like to pay. And are we surprised? Look at his artist that was saying, oh, we want our royalties. And just recently, oh, you can have your royalties, but you can't say nothing. You can't speak bad about us. Well, why would you? Why would that be a stipulation? If you did good business, why would that even be there? If you did good business, and if you uh, listen here, I'm gonna tell you how you do good business. That's just like we all we let's say we work a nine to five. We put in our two weeks notice. 
that's get that's doing good business. You know, hey, I'm you know, guys, I'm gonna put in my two weeks notice. You know, I want to thank you all, and I'll do my two weeks, and then boom, you move on. Uh, Wanting one one says, and it just happens that they're the last three standing, Puffy, Stevie, and Faith, from that whole dynamic. Absolutely, nope, not surprised at all. But you know, I'm so glad. <clears throat> See, I'm glad I didn't go live earlier and I got some sleep because now our thinking caps are on. Now we talking. Let's go. Diddy is going down. My counsel informed me that UMG claims that they did not pay for blank workers or sponsored any of the club love parties or writers camp. These claims have contradicted by the reality I saw with my own eyes. There were employees of UMG and Motown Records present at the writers camp at listening parties and other parties. I was told why wouldn't they be? Why would they be there? They're a part of his team. They're a part of his team. In my eyes, they are the chaperones. And we're not even going to call them handlers. We're going to call them the chaperones because they dare to look, spy, report back. Told by Diddy that they were, that they were there, and I saw them there. Diddy told me they were scouting for talent as it pertains to blank workers. They also pay. For so listen, when we talk about scout scouting for talent, that only takes me back here. The lawyer that he has worked with Tory Lanes, right? So speaking of Tory Lanes, let's just go back here for a second. He stays, he stays in the conversation. What's up, T? What's going on, my man? How you feeling? It's crazy. I'm on a love frequency. But you know, I got a mean, toxic side to me. <laughs> and I'll be throwing that playboy on. I can leave that bitch. Well, it seems like Tory Lanez has a mean, toxic side to him as well. Now, I can see why they was on the phone kiki and and ha ha about you know, having a toxic side. Like, that was just cute and cool. Let's go. And repeat. Uh, let it really do its thing. For sure. And that's crazy. Is that, you know, um, out of my R&B artists, um, that that I don't know if people would, would know that you are one of my favorite R&B artists. Wow, that that's a... That's what I'm listening to in the crib when I'm getting... You know what I'm saying? When I'm doing my thing and you know what I'm saying? With my lady, when I'm just... Mm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> ah, for sure. When I'm, the, when I'm in that vibe, and everybody got to start front. When they get in that vibe, they know they go get some of that Tory Lanez. Tory Lanez got a good six choice on, on, on the Smash and playlist. Now, look. That well, when they get in that vibe, they go over and get some Tory Lanez. Well, I wonder what vibe Megan the Stallion was in because she went over there and got some Tory Lanez. Let's get into that. What is it about that toxic D is what it is, people. It's that toxic X. Okay, have y'all ever had some toxic X? Listen here, if you haven't, then I have. And I'm going to tell you all about it. That toxic encounter... When you're low vibrational like that, it feels like, oh, my God. It's like, oh, my God, this is it. This is everything to me, you know? Like, where has this been all my life? But then as you learn and grow and get wisdom, you realize, I don't want no toxic man. No. I need a man or a spouse or a partner that's going to be headstrong, they can handle conversations, and it doesn't lead to the G-U-N being pulled out. You know? Because ain't that what happened? But let's get into this because when we talk about scouting for talent, I want to bring this up. Three years ago, God made my mission and my purpose clear. 
And my mission and my purpose is to do whatever and play whatever role that I have to play into saving the black race, number one. And number two, to making sure that everybody of all colors, all backgrounds, all creeds, all nationalities, all get this. We all get the same 24 hours, not just one race, not just another race, not just one gender, not another. We all get the same 24 hours. But I'm fighting this fight. And to other people, it's an impossible. It's not impossible. It's going to happen. We're going to make progress and change the world. But I can't do it alone. And I know there's people that feel just like me that are out there, that are talented, that's probably working for Google or Nike or working for bigger corporations that have a track record and have an experience at the level that I'm playing at. I'm not coming to just compete. I'm coming to win. I'm going to fucking buy Disney for us. Okay? So if you are one of these unicorn executives, please send me your resumes and your portfolios to God's work. Because I'm doing God's work. You're doing God's work. God's work at ComesGlobal.com. I'm doing the biggest human resources investment from the top level of CMOs to COOs to general managers, down to creative directors, down to creative producers. The list is so long, fashion designers. Below is the list. Please, please, God told me to ask y'all for help. I need your help. I need your help. I can't do it alone. I'm overwhelmed, I'm going crazy. I need talented people around me, the greatest around me. God, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you, please to send me some like-minded, like-frequency individuals that want to change this world. Love, please, love. Well, in my opinion, don't you think that Lil Rod was trying to change the music industry, you know? And then he's talking about God's work, but he's recruiting talent. Sir, don't you have, don't you have artists? Why isn't nobody like, come, you've had artists. Where did they go? Where are they now? You said, and it just happens that they're, Last three standing, Puffy, Stevie, and Faith from that whole dynamic. Nope, not a, not a surprise at all. Every step you take, every move you make, I'll be watching. You should have been the words. <laughs> I'm just saying, every step you take, every move you make, I'll be missing you doesn't even make sense. But what was they missing? The talent? <laughs> the talent and the and, and, and the big and the big dollars. Because this is the thing, Christopher Wallace, Biggie Smalls, rest in peace. Baby, he was it. He was it. I mean, he could he could finesse like any woman. I'm just gonna tell you, only thing he got to do is just do, do pull, pull up the pull, you know what I'm saying, bust one of them flows for you. And he has some stuff. I mean, he had some hits. No, he didn't. Did he leave my God out? Okay, please leave my God out of this. Please. But that's what he was doing. Come on, Tisa, give us some more tea, honey. For them. I have several videos of the challenge recording studio sessions, as well as the home recording sessions, and there are blank workers and producers in that studio. The blank workers in these videos were the only, were the only individuals paid. So they tried to say that Diddy, he had, Diddy had everybody working for him, but the blank workers, well, he had everybody, was using everybody's labor, but the blank workers. But listen, this is what I want to know. Where was Stevie at, you know, when, when Biggie went to glory? Why wasn't he on his, uh, his PR stuff? Did he give any PR around the time when Biggie had went to glory? That's the question that I need to know. Okay. Pay attention, people. And this is in the lawsuit were the only ones paid for this. The following are screenshots of the recording sessions that took place in Chalice Recording Studios. Again, there are girls sitting in the chairs. It looks like a studio session. Yep. Rest in yep, biggie. yep, 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 yep. He said this video was taken on January 29th, 2023. Inside Diddy's home located. Listen here. Now, I'm going to show y'all this. I sure am. I'm about to show y'all this. Look at this. Look at this. 
This video was taken on September 30th, 2022 inside Chalice Recording Studio. Dustin Combs solicited the S worker in this video. Get into it. When we talk about the documents, honey. Baby. Okay, so it says this video was taken on September 15th. Oh, so he got this video. So they got videos. This video was taken on September 30th, 2022. This video was taken on September 15th of 2022 inside Shalice Recording Studio. Justin Combs solicited the S worker in this video. Mr. Combs bragged about having fun and not getting caught. Uh, 98 in a, in, a, in a recording I could provide the court. And on multiple other occasions, Mr. Combs shared wild stories of his 30 years in the music industry. He shared how he would get things by. Y'all see that, right? Listen, when God, when, when that little voice tell you to do something, you do it. And that little voice was the Lord. And he told Lil Rod, take out your phone, baby. And take these photos and get this video footage. Maybe get these video footage. Because listen here, I, I, no shade, Lil Rod, at the end of the day, Lil Rod at some point in time was like, you know what, let me just bag myself up just in case this dude, he got so much power, he got so much money, and there's no telling if he's going to pay me or not. So let me get a little insurance. And um, if he doesn't pay me, then we're going to... Uh, share this experience with everybody that wants to listen that's gonna listen located on star island oof but there's more hold on y'all i think there's another video okay so that's the one that was on star island okay this one was he said this video was taken on September 30th inside Chalice Recordio Studio. Mm -hmm. Justin Combs solicited the blank worker in mm -hmm. this video. Oh my God. And you know what the funny thing is? They, the feds have probably already approached all these girls and got into their DMs and been like, yo, how much? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Again, y'all wanted receipts. He's saying he has everything to prove it. He's giving little screenshots of the videos What's Diddy's team got to say besides leaking the bloggers and dumbass Twitter? I, no shade to Twitter because y'all know I love people on Twitter, but Child, his attorney is on mute. Look around and attorney's on mute. <laughs> Look around and attorney's on mute, honey. LaRon said, baby, I got the footage. Are y'all going to uh, let's go to court? He keeps saying, I want to go to court. I want to go to court. Let's go to court. And the reason why they're trying to prevent to go to court is because y'all already know. Y'all already know. Let's go. And shout out to Tisa Tills. I'm reviewing her video and I've been saying, oh, I'm going to review her video and I'll tag her in it. But tonight is actually our first time reviewing it and I'm actually loving this. So I'm going to be uh, reviewing her videos more often. Did he brag about having fun and not getting caught? In the recording, I can provide the court on multiple occasions. Did he share wild stories in his 30 years of the music industry? He shared how he would get things by force. That included record deals, signatures on contracts, sex acts with women and men, as well as the women of his enemies. He bragged about having, for instance. Hold on. Y'all, pay it. Y'all listening? Hit that like button really quick. Let me get some, this is a lip gloss break. But hit that like button. Hit the like button, please. I would appreciate so y'all can help me grow. Growing is caring. Diddy bragged about having Daphne Joy, the child mother of a competing rapper, on payroll as one of okay. and men, as well as the women of his enemies. Hold he on, bragged on, on, on. about having so that's little screenshots is. of the videos. What's Diddy's team got to say? Besides leaking the blog. Okay, the reason why I keep going back, I want y'all to hear this little piece. I'm going to let y'all hear it and then I'm going to stop it. I'm going to say that's the piece right there. Listen to this. There's a dumbass Twitter app. No shade to Twitter because y'all know I love people on Twitter, but people in particular. 
Diddy bragged about having fun and not getting caught. In the recording, I can provide the court on multiple occasions. Diddy shared wild stories in his 30 years of the music industry. He shared how he would get things by force. That included record deals, signatures on contracts, sex acts with women and men, as well as the women of his enemies. When we think about enemies, let's just say P. Diddy versus Biggie Smalls. Who you got? Baby, I got Biggie Smalls. That statement right there took me out. When we think about he's got a leash on faith. And I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't have a life insurance on faith. And I think the reason why faith is still existing is because the feds was on the case. Y'all with me? Let's go. Come on, Tisa, give us some more tea, honey. He bragged about having, for instance, y'all pay it. Y'all listening? Hit yeah. that like button really quick. Yeah. This is a lip gloss break. We listening, Hit that girl. like button. I'm definitely Hit the listening. like button, please. I would appreciate so y'all can help me grow. Miss Tisa, I'm listening, Growing sister. Growing is caring. Yes. And I shared it too, Miss Tisa. Twice. Diddy bragged about having Daphne Joy the child mother of a competing rapper on payroll as one of his blank workers. Little Rod says he has this on tape and he has sworn to the court of law that he will provide this when they go to trial. Listen here. This man is saying that he has this, that, and the third. Listen here. I don't think that Little Rod wants to play with the with the, with the the uh, court system. And I believe that he's an upstanding man. I feel like he has talent the demand definitely has talent he wouldn't be around diddy diddy said that he needed talented people around him so can we discredit that the man is talented no we cannot because in that recording you heard p diddy saying god told him to go out there and look for talent and then we got stevie j we got um faith evans and p diddy they're still standing and we can say uh, I'll be sure is still standing, but he's not standing with him. Let's go. Come on, Miss Tisa. I have a video of Diddy on a massage table receiving a massage from a professional masseuse while Daphne Joy is giving him a foot massage. Diddy bragged about shooting a bl blank in the face in 1999 in New York City and getting away with it. He bragged about the part. The lady. Listen, y'all. The lady, remember the lady that said that he powed her in the face? Well, Lil Rod said in these accusations that he confessed that he did it and he got away with it. Because he paid her off. That lady sued him. He forgot to tell Lil Rod that. That he actually had to come up out of his pocket and pay her. Wani says, Al is barely standing and Kim is unrecognizable. Oh, you said Al is barely standing and Lil' Kim is unrecognizable. But see, I'm that's the thing. Biggie and Lil' Kim were supposed to have been together. And listen, let's, let's take a look right here. If Biggie and Kim really got together and got married and things like that, right? And she would have had that baby. Do y'all think that we would have got some epic music? I feel like we would have got some epic music. If they had not taken him out, Biggie would be bigger than Puffy right now. But I don't think that he would be doing, you know, this wouldn't be his rep. You know, his thing is, you know, making it out the hood. He could have gave back to the hood, you know? But anywho, let's listen to, um, yep, let's listen to Tisa. She got some more to tell us, y'all. Florida attorney Johnny Cochran's savvy legal skills and ability to pay off witnesses through private investigators and other third parties. He bragged about having Jennifer Lopez carrying his bang bang into the club uh, the night of the shooting and the fact that he had so much power and influence over her at the time. He bragged about getting Shine to take the heat for the shooting and the, and, and the fact that he paid Shine 
through a record deal with his good friend, L.A. Reid. He has Diddy on tape saying this. Keep that out. He's got him on tape saying this. And listen here. When we think about L.A. Reid, I think about TLC. When we think about L.A. Reid, I think about TLC. And why I feel like this is, you know, this all makes sense to me because his loyalty wasn't for females. I mean, look at Lil' Kim. When Lil' Kim got locked up, he didn't send her a dime. He didn't even write her a letter. Guess who wrote her a letter before he did? Oprah. Oprah wrote Lil' Kim a letter. But she was a part of, you think that he would have just left her hanging if Biggie was alive? No, he wouldn't have. No, he wouldn't have. And actually, I don't even think Kim would have been in that position had Biggie been here. Biggie would have, man, Biggie was a different type of guy, y'all. Y'all don't know who he is. That man was a different type of guy. You know? And one thing I can say, the man wasn't no deadbeat. Can I say that about Diddy? No. Because his children were left at the home and we all saw what happened that day. <laughs> he said, oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Now I'm thinking, I'm loving this. I think I'm going to do like an overnight show. Do like my daytime and stuff like that. Get my family situated. Take me a nap and then come back and do it. Do a night. You know what I'm saying? Late night show. What y'all think about this? Let's go. Did he brag about the power he has and the fact that he beat up record executive Steve Stout? He left uncontrollably as he talked about busting him in the head with a bottle of champagne in the chair. He bragged about beating up Gerald Rutschney outside a nightclub in Hollywood. He also informed me that only poor people pay taxes. Listen to this. Now get into this. When we talk about these acts right here, let a regular citizen go out and do any of what he's doing. He would have been caught, but it goes back to the money, y'all. It's the money. Money, get me out of trouble. You got enough of it, it, it will. I'm going to need them call Fonsworth Bentley in, into court. I know he got the tea. Oh, yes. And we want all of the tea under the umbrella. Honey, listen here. I need him to bring that umbrella up in there. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Bring your umbrella full of stories, okay? And we know you're going to be sharp. And get into that. Get into that. I'm going to need them to call Fonsworth Bentley and support. I know you guys call the T. He diddy bopped his ass up out of there and <laughs> left them kids grow men on their own. Exactly. Exactly. You think he would have left us? I'm just, I'm just, I'm so over him right now. Let's get into what T.C. has to say. Diddy shared that it is a common practice. This is all in the recording. Diddy shared that it was a common practice in the music industry to wire money from anonymous accounts overseas. That way, if there's ever a need to take care of a problem, it would never be traced back to him. These accounts are in Germany. Diddy also shared that he invests in many shell companies and provides funding for businesses like Wingstop. He said, I can share other things, but I do not feel... Okay, Wingstop. Who owns Wingstop? Rick Ross. Jonathan Adi said that Rick Ross had come over to him and pretty roughhoused him. Let's talk about that. Let's go. Comfortable putting them in this document. I'm willing to discuss them with the court under seal to preserve my Fifth Amendment rights. He says I declare under penalty of perjury under the laws of the United States. Do you realize that if he is shown to be lying, the judge can throw him in jail for up to seven years. This is federal court. Mm -hmm. Do you realize the federal government can sue him? Do you realize Diddy can sue him into oblivion? 
the fact that he's declaring this lets me know he's 10 toes down. Mm -hmm. He said, I declare under penalty of perjury in the laws of the United States that the proceeding is true and correct. I understand that if I intentionally lie, I would be subject to punishment. Baby, let's go back into the rug. Yes. Little Rod is about to take Diddy down for money laundering. Yes. And he should. And he should, yes, Rick Ross. Rick Ross owns a uh, uh, Wingstop. Yeah, he owns Wingstop. And he sure does. And remember, um, I don't know if you were here when we had played that uh, investigation from Jonathan Adi, the one that tried to uh, let the police know in that interrogation room what did he was what had going on, what he was about, how the setup was, how it was, you know. It, listen, he's going down. Tax evasion. That's what got, that's why Rico laws were invented with the Italian mob and the Jewish mafia. Y'all, let's get it. But BMF knows. Let's talk about the rugs and distribution. On several occasions, Diddy and Farmy and the executives of the party in his home, right? Mm -hmm. Where Lucia, uh, Inform me that the executives at the parties in his home were Lucian Grange, Ethiopia Haberman, and other talent acquisition, uh, talent acquisition representatives of UMG and Motown. Did he mm. often left the parties when these executives appeared and took them to his bedroom? They will be gone for several hours. Although I saw who Diddy was referring to, I never personally met with or spoke to Lucian Grange or Ethiopia. Listen here. Because they are the chaperones, right? His loyalty is going to be to them over, over you. They've been there for the longest. They've had his bag. This is from observation. I don't know any of the any of this to be true, but they've they have a history, and you're just a new you're the new hire, right? So let's think about it. When the new hires come in. Some of the old workers, you know, sometimes they'll try to pile all the work onto the new person so they can get the hang of the job and then their job can be easier for them. Let's go. Yeah. Or every other, any other executive who is present at these parties as prohibited from doing so as meeting or being introduced to them was a privilege I would have to earn through loyalty and obedience to Diddy. Diddy personally informed me that these executives were present and also told me they came a talent scout. In addition, Diddy often switched his approach to force me to obey and comply with his demands. On multiple occasions, he would threaten me with physical harm. Diddy threatened to eat my face and inform me he was willing to kill, oh, murk his own mother to get what he wanted so he wouldn't think twice about harming me. Now, mind you. Listen. Trigger warning. Allegedly fair use commentary and fair use, baby. That man said, Diddy said that he'll bite his face off. Now, I've heard of people eating human beings. Let's go. He also witnessed the thing with G. Diddy would also make me work out of this bedroom whenever he had gang members. Uh, whenever he had gang members and rug dealers to visit him. I witnessed Diddy hand out guns from the hidden room in his bedroom closet. The individuals who received these guns were often dressed in black. Little Rod is saying under perjury. Listen, y'all. If y'all saw that raid that they did on Diddy's house, do y'all remember his closet? It was ransacked. In this lawsuit, it says that he had stuff in his closet. He had arms. He was armed in his closet. If they found any of that, they retrieved it. And listen here, when the feds went in, they had come out with boxes. I mean, bags. Sounds like a mental behavior. Absolutely. Absolutely. Have y'all ever watched Dexter's Laboratory? Child, get into this. That he, what did he what make him work out of his bedroom whenever he had gang members and drug dealers visit him? He witnessed Diddy hand out unregistered, unmarked guns from the hidden room in his bedroom closet. The individuals who received these guns were often dressed in black. Didn't the rage just say that there were hidden rooms and they found unregistered guns? Y'all, 
I don't know how y'all, well, not y'all, but mm. I've seen individuals bring bags of cash to Diddy's home. Diddy informed me that this money came from UMG. I witnessed known gang members at his home in LA and Miami be paid with stacks of cash. He has in his hidden room in his bedroom closet. Yo, if this is true, that means the feds have all this on video. I've seen Diddy bring the cash out and place it on the bedroom table, bed, and couch. Other than Diddy, the only... And listen here. Let's talk about this. Some of these people be hiding cash in their houses. You know? So if they found money or anything in there, maybe they're confiscating that because they need to know where did it come from. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Look, maybe I'm telling my age, but yes, I used to watch Dexter's laboratory. He would get up in that laboratory and he would, honey, let's go. Individual I witnessed enter the hidden room in his bedroom closet was KK. She was allowed to remove cash and rugs from there. You said, what in the ditty is the godfather is going on here? Exactly. Listen, she said in this lawsuit, it says that people were dressed in all black to come and get an un, you know, those serial numbers be scraped off or off those, you know, things, those, the, 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 the steel. Let's get into it. And they was in all black. What does that sound like? It sounds like they're going to be the jump out boys. Like they dare to, they, okay, thank you for giving me my ammunition. Now it's time for me to go out here and do what I got to do. Let me go ahead and do the job. That's what it sounds like. Let me go ahead and do the job. What job did they have? Get into it. What type of job did were they on? Why were they coming to his house and getting those serial numbers scraped off of the firearms? Allegedly, only one reason. They weren't putting on a talent show. Get into it, y'all. Hidden room in his bedroom closet. During the 13 months I lived and traveled with Diddy, I witnessed KK openly order her assistants to keep Diddy high off of lace gummies and pills. I have a recording taken on the yacht that Diddy rented just before Christmas 2022 to shortly after New Year's Eve 2023. Y'all, he got it on tape. In this recording, you can hear Diddy coaching, <gasps> coaching comedian Amy Schumer how to rap. And KK is in the background instructing her staff to get Diddy. Now peep this out. Amy Schumer. Monique brought Amy Schumer up in her lawsuit. Amy Schumer gets paid this much. I got, you know, I got this plus more. And Diddy is friends with Amy Schumer. When you talk about the blackballing and all that, isn't Diddy cool with uh, uh, Tyler and Oprah and all them? Let's get into it. Diddy's, right? Get Diddy's uh, laced narcotic gummies while Amy Schumer and her inbred face was on that yacht. Ew. How much did he pay people to have a freak off of Amy Schumer? That woman is vile. Inside and now. That's the first time I've seen a personality inside bleed out outside. KK was also, requ also required on, he says he has them on tape. KK also required all employees from the butler to the chef to the housekeeper. Listen here. He has recordings. I don't think that you can out top a recording. This is something that you said. This man knows what he's going up against. He knows that he could go to jail if he's lying. He's saying, hey, I've got all the proof right here, judge. Let's take it to court. Follow the guest list? Absolutely. Follow that guest list. Shout out the Kardashians was over there. And listen, I believe one of his lawyers uh, is connected to the Kardashians. Because if memory serves me correctly, the lawyer that he's using is the same lawyer Tory Lanez used. And where's Tory Lanez? Hello. To walk around with a pouch and fanny pack filled with Colombian dancing dust, GHB, E, marijuana gummies, and Tusi, a pink drug that was a combination of E and Coke, you know. KK ordered and distributed all that stuff. 
to Diddy and the celebrity guests who were present on this rented yacht and in his homes in LA, New York City, and Miami. On multiple occasions, KK forced me to carry Diddy's bike pouch against my will. I had to carry the pouch to the booby trap in Miami. Brendan Paul always carried the black pouch with him. I have videos and photos of this and can provide them in court. Isn't it funny that when you look at the TMZ raid, when the feds roll up on Brendan and them, when they're getting on the private plane, not Diddy's, because Diddy's private plane was flying without him in it. If you zoom in, Brendan's wearing the black pouch. Brendan would transport the rugs through his carry-on luggage while flying with Diddy. Diddy and Farm as if the TSA does not check for narcs and other rugs in carry-on luggage. On several occasions, this is when you're flying private. Nobody please do this for, for coach. On several occasions, I witnessed Brendan Paul pack coat and luggage before taking international trips with Diddy. As the chief of staff, KK was instrumental in organizing and executing Diddy's criminal enterprise. Uh, KK had the following individuals execute the following tasks for the enterprise. Brendan Paul and DeForest Taylor. On the following dates, I witnessed either DeForest or Brendan or KK procure, transfer, and distribute E, all the stuff, by packing these substances in the carry-on luggage and going through TSA. November 22nd, 2022, December 22nd, 2022, uh, April 28th, 2023, and November 4th, 2023. The destinations for these trips were LA, California, Miami, St. Bartholomew, and of course, London, England. You guys. You guys. Listen, wasn't Diddy just in London? Diddy was just in London. Listen, y'all. When I tell you, Diddy pissed off the wrong one. Diddy, if you are listening, you should have paid that man. And you should have wrote your wrongs. Listen, peep this out. I got something that I want to share with y'all. Okay, if y'all listening, y'all let me know. This is something right here. So this is from two years ago. This video was from two years ago. And I'm going to give you the right date. August 14th of 2021. Y'all get into this prophecy right here. Directed to Sean Combs, uh, a.k.a. P. Diddy. Um, this is a, a a warning video. This is a calling you to repent. August 14th of 2021. We're in 2024. I'll say it again. This video that we're about to listen to was made on August the 14th of 2021. Listen to this and then I'm going to get into the comments. This video is directed to Sean Combs, uh, a.k.a. P. Diddy. Um, this is a, a warning video. This is a calling you to repentance video. And I know people who know you directly, so this is not uh, a far-fetched thing that, that you would see this video. This isn't clout. This ain't none of that. You've been uh, in my spirit for many months now. And every time I've got ready to make a video about you, you know, God would say, now is not the time, but today was the time. And the first thing I'm going to read right off the bat to you, this is the verse that God gave me for you. And I'm going to read it out the new international version, Genesis 3, 1. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. Diddy, you are a sneaky individual. And I've seen news story after news story of you just doing corrupt stuff, evil stuff. I've seen a young kid who alleges that you, you know, you stole one of his ideas and you've got a history, you got a record of doing people dirty. You got a record uh, of being a fraud. And, and what God showed me about you, man, you are in a dangerous place. You need deliverance from demonic influence in your life. You got a strong snake python spirit. You got a real uh, slick, disgusting, wicked, evil tongue. And it's serious. Now, I'm not saying I don't know you sold your soul to the devil or any of that, but God is telling me to tell you, Diddy, you need to fall on your face and you need to repent. He's looking at you. He's, he's turned his attention towards you. And right now he's giving you a warning to humble yourself, to fall on your face and to repent from your wicked ways. You've sown a lot of bad, and God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that he will reap. 
you're going to reap what you sow. And God wants you to know, I've seen every evil, dirty, wicked, scheming plot of yours. I've seen how you've done his children dirty. I've seen the things behind closed doors. I've seen you use that, that snake-like tone and that influence the same way the snake did with Eve. And I'm telling you, Diddy, right now, repent or God is going to handle you. He's giving you a chance to humble yourself and repent. Why? Because he loves you. Because he loves you. And it's and you know what? Man, if you want to reach out and talk to me, we can. If you want to just blow me off, you know people to reach out to. There's some people you need to make things right with. You, you have came against some of God's anointed. You've touched some of God's anointed. He says, touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm. And God has allowed you to get away with a lot, just as he's allowed many people to get away with a lot, you know, for a while. But some of your recent conversations, some of the recent things that you've been plotting and scheming and thinking about, God has highlighted you to me. And he shows me you've got a dragon-like, snake-like spirit. And we got to come against people like you. And we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but you you, you know better and you've opened yourself up to this deception and this evil for power, money, and fame. Your lust is out of control. And God says, I see you, Sean. Puffy, he see you. He's calling for your repentance. Humble yourself. You know what's so crazy? I finished the video and then I went to go find some kind of thumbnail that I could post of you. And I see this uh, Diddy with the with the crown and with DJ Snake. Confirmation. Stop playing around with the snake. I didn't find any lie told. What do y'all think? Okay. Uh, Wani11 says, I wonder what, the evi what evidence the housekeepers have collected over the years. Three years? Wow. He changes his name like a snake sheds his skin. Let's go. Okay. Let's see here. Diddy has changed his name to more than us transsexuals, you know? We only changed our name once. <laughs> well, girl, that's besides the point, honey. Let's get back into what Miss Tisa was saying about this lawsuit, okay? Shout out to Tisa Tales, you all. Get on over there and follow her. Um, oh, she's at 381,000 subscribers. All right. Y'all get on over there and get some tea. You guys, I, I'm being dead serious. What we know is you are. Diddy going to say to this? You guys, you can't say nothing. Little Rod, people have been so focused on Little Rod's attorney uh -huh, that uh -huh. Diddy has Little Rod uh -huh. dead to rights. Dead to rights. Listen, maybe Little Rod's attorney was to throw Diddy off. Because in my mind, it lets me know that Diddy, Diddy ain't Diddy in no more, okay? Nobody wants to be around him. Nobody wants to be seen with him. You want to know why? It's because us bloggers, we're going to take that photo and we're going to put them on, on blast. Girl, what was y'all talking about? <laughs> All right now, Tisa Tales. Yes, shall she be on it? Let's get into this. I'm sorry, Little Rod has Diddy dead to rights. What? is he going to actually say what's he going to say what is he going to say what can listen can't nobody so take my pride can't nobody hold me down oh no i got to keep on moving that's what he's gonna say that's what he's gonna say it's his pride that's exactly what he's gonna say let's go Amy Schumer is vile, but a quick sweep of Amy Schumer's Instagram, and I found the picture of Amy Schumer and Diddy actually chilling. I found the picture 
of Diddy and Amy Schumer actually chilling. What? In Shut up. St. Arts. In who? Hold on. Okay. This is December 31st, 2022. Uh -oh. This is on the same trip that that girl, Gracie, was assaulted. No. Here we go. Okay. Oh, Tisa. This is on the same trip that... Ooh. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on, y'all. Here it goes. Amy Schumer. My 10 best moments of 2022. Mm -hmm. All here with my love. Oh. Diddy. Oh. No. Here it is. Right there. Anyway. Damn it. There's Tisa. also a few other things I want to bring to you. Damn, Tisa. You know you be getting a tea. Tisa, you didn't went over. The, you didn't found the photo. Oh, Tisa, Tisa, you showing now, girl? Hold on. Listen, y'all. Tisa said that she got the tea. Tisa said I got the tea, y'all. And I said, yeah, let's get it. Wani one one says those words you sang are very telling. Replace pride with butt. Can't nobody take my butt. Can't nobody hold me down. <laughs> Oh no, I got to keep on moving. <laughs> Listen, get into this, Miss Tisa. Girl, you be on it. Here, let me play you. This is on the same trip that. Uh -huh. Hold on. Please, yes, we gonna hold on. Here it goes. Amy Schumer, my 10 best moments of 2022. I like when she put that All phone up. All here with Look. my love. She put that phone up. Oh. Diddy. Oh, here Diddy. it is. She right said, there. here it is. That was Amy anyway, Schumer. There's on, also a few other things I'm with. St. Farts. And where? Hold on. Okay. This is December 31st, December 31st. 2022. Okay. This is on the same trip All that right. that girl, Gracie, was oh, yeah. assaulted. So listen. Here we go. This is when Gracie was assaulted on his yacht. And guess who it was? Child, Amy Schumer was on that trip. Look, hold on, Tisa. Look at her. She on there just, look, she about to bring it out. Look, she on it. This is on the same look, trip that... Okay. Hold on. Uh huh. Yeah, we waiting. Here it goes. Oh, Amy yeah. Schumer, my ten best moments of two thousand and twenty-two. Right. Let us see the photo. All Lisa. here with my love. Let us see it. Oh, Diddy. Girl, look at her. They hanging out. Here it is. Yep, it is. Right there. Right there. Right there. Ms. Anyway, Lisa. there's also a few other things I want to bring to you guys' okay, attention. Please do. Right. Uh huh. Uh. There's a St. Barth video okay. of Diddy and all his people walking around, including Young Miami and mm -hmm. Christian. No way. They put arrows and names. The video was uploaded to YouTube without arrows and names on December 28, 2022. What? Quincy. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me uh let me airdrop this to myself. Okay. Girl, you giving us Thanks the tea so tonight. Much, Jamie. Thank you, Tisa. Let me airdrop this. I'm going to put this on the screen. Listen here. Can everybody we, saying. Can we hashtag Tisa Tales, honey? <laughs> can we hashtag Tisa Tales? Okay. Because mother is absolutely working, honey. Mm -hmm. Honey, money is, mother is out here. Money mother. Okay. We're going to call her money, money mother, Tisa Tales. Okay. Because, honey, mother is actually over there working, honey. Listen, she says, I didn't come to play. I came to slay. And honey, that's what she's doing on this content. Tisa, tell us more, girl. I've got my mug. Okay. Did you get yours? Did you get your mug? Okay. Yes. Let me get my tea. <laughs> Little Rod's a clout chaser. And thank you for hashtagging Tisa Tales. Let's go. Little Rod's a liar. That never happened. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Christian wasn't even there, baby. There is proof of all that let's get into this hold on really quick you know another well, hold on, Tisa. let me just say this for all of those out there talking about some they don't believe that lady and all this and that 
you have a sister, you have a mother. What if that was your sister or your mother that was placed in that position? She's at work just trying to do her job just to make a dollar, just to keep the lights on, just to pay the bills, just to make the rent. Come on, y'all. Stop acting like you ain't never worked. When you go to where you, you working, you working for a cause, not no applause. Money mother Tisa Tail slay, honey. Yes. Let's get it. Presentation on the screen, ladies and gentlemen of the distinguished. Let's get this going. Okay. Okay, Miss Tisa. What you gonna show us? All right. Uh-huh. So what you gonna show us, girl? Here we have. Oh. Let's see who we got. We got Quincy right there. I think I think that's Young Miami. Young Hold Miami. on. We got more yeah, people. That was young Miami. We got oh, Carisha. Miami. Here go Carisha. Yes. D who's still messing with Diddy, by the way. Yes. Maybe. Shane uh -huh. letting that paycheck go. Uh -huh. mm. Here we got all the twins. Is that French Montana? I think yeah, that's French that Montana French in Montana. the pink shirt. That's KK, I believe, in the black. Yep, that's French Montana in the pink, right? Those girls don't even pay Young Miami no mind. They were like, you're not my mommy, right? We also had the girls, Jesse, Delilah, and Chance all standing right there. Do we not? This yes. is the video from St. Farts that everybody said was a lie. Can it happen? What are you talking about? They weren't there, right? Young Miami, those girls don't mess with Young Miami Ooh. at all. You're not my mama. There go Little Rod right there. Look. There's Little Rod. Y'all look, Little Rod is right there. He's there. Young Miami's there. The kids is there. Everybody's there. Uh, Wanting One One says, I wonder if Lil Uzi Bird and his city girl ever party with Diddy and his city girl. <laughs> you know what? I don't... I don't really, ooh. I don't know because JT, she's been, mm, she ain't really been full of what Young Miami. And you know, if they homegirls, and mm, I would, I'm going to leave that alone. But we're going to talk about that, Young Miami and uh, JT. JT, not on that. JT had already went down. JT said, I've already seen a seal girl. I'm not trying to see another one. <laughs> she says, I'm not with the foolishness with you or your man. You and that new. Okay. Let's get into it. Miss Tisa, listen, Miss Tisa be on it. Look at her. Mother be on it, honey. Look, the way she paused right there is how I'm looking at the screen. Like, girl, give me more, give me more. Play it. There is little Rod uh -huh, right there him. in the baseball cap. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah, that's it. I think that guy, who's that guy? Santella, I think. Anyway, oh. everybody is in that. Uh, everybody's in that video. Everybody that he said was oh. there. If you notice, there's a lot of little knapsacks. Oh. If you notice, KK was there, Centella was there, uh -huh. Brendan was there. They uh -huh. all got their knapsacks. Yeah, yeah. They all got there. This is why he hired Bobby Sternum. This is why it uh -huh. is international crimes. Oh. Really quick, I want to say a special thank you to. Um, uh, oh, uh, wow. yeah, child, listen here, honey. That was a lot, baby. It's video footage of this man saying, Get into this now. This is the this is the the rug meal. It's uh, this is Tisa Tales again. Let me like it and let me share it because he, I, we don't need her. To, I mean, I don't think she'll flag us, but we can at least give her a note. Okay, so let me do Tisa Tales for viewing. Please don't strike us, sis. <laughs> viewing. Please don't strike us. Okay. So I got that right here. Now listen, y'all. This one that she titled is called um, Diddy is Done. Feds have their first clip. Brendan Paul refuses to take rap for Diddy. Now listen here. If we all know, 
didn't Sean take the uh didn't he take the rap? Why is he getting allegedly? Why is he so comfortable for wanting people to take the rap for him? Right? So let's get into this. Deals, or at least the plea deals that Diddy's team is looking at. Most specifically, we need to call Brandon Paul to the front of the church. Please, Brandon, Brandon Paul, please come to the front of the church, Miss T. Pass the teacher. I, pass the teacher. Pass the teacher tales. Okay. Pass the teacher teacher tales. Okay. We're about to give you a whole bunch of names tonight, Miss Tisa, honey. Listen here. Let me flip it around because y'all already know how we um, give credit. So this is Tisa Seals' video, and it is titled, Diddy is done. Feds have their first flip, and Paul refuses to take rap for Diddy. So this is what we're doing. We hit that like button already, okay? Because the last time we was a little late on it, but we hit it, and we shared, okay? Now, let's go ahead and get up into this concert, honey. Now we can listen to it. We just can't, you know, play her whole oh, video. And, well, play her video and cute. like show her because that's like, you know, playing her copyright. But we can listen to it. By Little Rod in a sworn declaration delivered to the court, I believe today or yesterday, what oh. has been accused of being Diddy's drug mule. Now, if you don't oh. know what a, a sworn declaration is, he's basically saying under penalty of perjury. Uh -huh. Penalty of perjury is easily looking at seven years. On oh, seven years. Almost a decade like Sean took, right? Uh, Wani Wawa says, all I know is T.I. and Tiny are like, we can catch our breath for a minute while they focus on Diddy. <laughs> Listen here, T.I. and Tiny, honey, they gonna be up next. <laughs> Listen here, I guarantee you. Once this and, and mark my words and remember this live, if Tyrone Blackburn gets justice justice in this case, baby, he's going back for TI and Tiny. He's definitely going back for TI and Tiny. On top of that, it's a lot. On top of that, they can sue him for everything he's worth and just go in. Little Rod has doubled down and said he's serious. And everybody is like, but what's going to happen? Did he do it? Did he do it? Did he do it? Um, baby, it looks like Little Rod might be saying, yes, he did. Y'all, let's get into this because they're saying Brendan Paul, the feds are literally offering him some type of deal. Because Listen here. Listen, I wouldn't put it past him. I would not put that past him. When you think about it, when this dude has what he has on him, you think he's not going to talk? Listen here. This dude, I don't think that he has the amount of money that Diddy has, right? Baby, it's given. It's a deal. Let's make a deal. And if he heard anything about Shine's story, honey, Diddy, you on your own with this one. Baby, you're going to you gonna have to, you gonna have to ride this one now. You gonna have to uh, go on, on down and lay it on down, lay it on down, go lay it on down, down the road, and protect your wussy. Okay, let's go. Because he could be the one to take down Diddy's empire. Now let's get into this. Okay. Oh, yeah, let's go. First of all. Oh yeah. We need to look at what happened. Okay, okay. What happened, Tisa? Brendan was listed as Diddy's mule. Okay. 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 Um, according to Little Rod. Right. The feds right. Busted Diddy. And arrested and out of that whole raid. They arrested who? Don't tell me that they arrested Brendan. The only people that were, I think there were two people arrested. Brendan was one of them. Shut Brendan up. Brendan was definitely arrested and he was arrested. Girl, <laughs> shut up. Why was he arrested? For possession and having Colombian dancing dust lace gummies. Okay. So we no. get into that, right? However, Hold on, we gotta take a pause, Tisa. You giving us too much tea, girl. Now we gonna take a pause. Now you explain explain it to us some more, honey, because we need this tea. Hello. People are saying that this might be the time that Brendan's family wants to get a hold of him and make him flip. I'm getting. I do have to be honest with you. I'm getting conflicting stories. Some people are saying that Brandon's already trying to work out a deal because his family is like, "Oh no, you know he used to be like an ex basketball player from Syracuse." Don't believe me? Hold on, let me pull. The yeah, listen here. Brandon cannot afford that. You know he's been in. He's played basketball. You know he's been out there. 
He has a reputation. And when we think about aspiring children that want to be basketball players and things like that, we don't need Brendan being that example. You know? We tell mm -mm. Let's go. This article up. Exactly. Brendan Paul uh -huh. used to be a basketball player Girl. for Syracuse University. No. Syracuse the University is upstate New York. Uh, New York. People say that Brendan yeah. was seduced by the lifestyle, the power, the clout that oh, wow. came with working for Diddy. No, I, I don't know how much clout that might get him on. Well, you know, getting into places and being like, hey, you know, Diddy got this. You know, maybe going into a restaurant. Maybe Diddy knows him. He got to connect. He can go in there. He needs to eat. Hey, put this on Diddy's tab. Bounce. You know? Let's talk about it. Let's go. Cell, by, uh, cell block four. However, right? He is, much like Little Rod, an aspiring music producer. It makes you wonder, did he have to take the daily on shot? Did he wake up? Well, listen here. It's given that Brendan is taking the role of Cassie in J-Lo when it comes to holding things. You hear me? Because didn't they both allege that they... Child, let's go. Bad with two women and one Diddy looking at them like, morning, sunshine. What's for breakfast? No, where are you going? Stay. Did he wake up shocked? Walking around days, talking about something. You're probably wondering how I en ended up here. I'm not making light of what happened to Little Rod, but it's been a long day. Let me have my laughs. Anyway, you can right? have it. You can have it, Tisa. You work damn hard. You deserve it. Get you a little laugh in. All this, I mean, all this discovery, um, research, people don't really understand what real you know, uh, passionate creators go through or, or the time, you know, it, it takes a lot of time, but this is what we love. This is our passion. So it does not feel like work. So that's why she's going to have a good time. Tisa, go ahead and have a good time. How you doing? He is also an aspiring music producer and he's achieved the enviable position as a team member of one of rap's richest figures. However, even though he's an aspiring music producer, I do not believe Brendan ever laid down any tracks. Brendan, again, if you can believe Little Rod, his main thing is making sure that Diddy don't ever touch the ground, right? Oh. Um, he, get this, Brendan is only 25 years old, who less than two years ago. So, oh. so pretty much Brendan is there to, you know, keep, ha, 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 I get ha, ha. Ha, I get ha, 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 ho, oh, ho, oh, oh. It's giving, girl, you better, where's that pouch at? It's giving, where's that pouch? Diddy, they said Diddy needed a pouch of stuff to get going. He had to stay that way. Uh, Wani11 says, how they got... All those rugs and no fancy. Yep, they got a straight connect to the pure stuff. Listen here, when you talk about that love with the coco from the other countries, honey, I remember when I had some. Okay, when I was back in the day, I'm gonna tell you, been there, done that. But child, I'm gonna tell y'all this. It was one, one person. Da 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 da. da whoop the whoop. He left me to whoop the whoop. I said, that's some good stuff. He said, okay, you can you can have. He left it with me so he didn't have to ride with it. So being a recovering addict, I know. I can tell you a story. Once an addict, always an addict, you know? I've done it. And I'm I, I'm I'm here to, to speak about it. Some people, they don't make it out, you know? Some people just don't. Let's go. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. He was enrolled in college in a small West Virginia town. So this kid, again, they're saying Brendan's family is pushing really, really hard. If they're not, if anybody knows Brendan's family, you need to push for a plea deal, okay? But they're saying that Brendan's family is pushing him really, really hard. He is only 25 years old. Oh, no. He's only been out of college for less than two years. No. He was on a basketball scholarship. 
He grew up in a sports-centric family outside of Cleveland. He had dreamed of playing college basketball and managed to walk into the team. Oh, yeah, it was right, at Syracuse University. But after just 17 minutes of playing time in two years, oh, my God, the 6'4 guard, he's 6'4", transferred from the powerhouse Division I school to Fairmount State, where he came off the bench in Division II games to knock down three-pointers. Anyway, they said not so much D, more three. He was a great guy, great teammate. His parents came to many home games, driving around three hours from the Cleveland area to see their son play. So he comes from a loving party. They said, we really didn't party. We, this is his teammate. We were in the middle. Well, what a disappointment. He said, what a disappointment. He got a free ride scholarship to go out there and make something of himself. And now he finds himself in the situation of Diddy's mess. And this is not the first time people have got caught up in his mess. Shine. Let's take it back to Shine. When we talk about that life, this man hadn't let, let that life go. In my opinion, 17 minutes. Yes. Let's go. Middle of nowhere, and it was pretty much basketball, hang out with each other, watch basketball, watch football, all that kind of stuff. He shared with his teammates that he wanted a life outside of ba after basketball, making beats. Somehow he leveraged a business degree from the school in West Virginia into a role in Diddy's entourage just months after his last college basketball game. It was Christmas 2022. Brendan was traveling aboard. Okay, so anyway, we're going to get into that in a second, right? So what's going on with this? Well, let me get back into the sources. People are saying that Brendan Paul is going to be the first person to flip. People are saying that the feds are offering Brendan Paul a deal. And people are saying that Brendan Paul might be the first person to do it. Think about it. He's only 25. You're get into this. Now, Brendan Paul is only 25. <clears throat> but let me tell you this. Ciao. This was in 2024, right? March 11th of 2024. Get into this. I want y'all to get into this here. And shout out to Media Takeout. Shout out to our friends over at Media Takeout. Okay, so that's Media Takeout. And it says, P. Diddy gets accused of having a gay relationship with a Miami DJ, the house cat. Get into it. Let me scroll up so y'all can see his picture. That's the house cat right there. Get into those nails, honey. Get, his, get into his uh, manicured nails, honey. You see it? You see his nails? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now get up to this, honey. <laughs> Girl, why don't this want to play? to get in here and check this out. Jaws of Trotsky literally just called out Diddy for allegedly catching him at a party with Felix the house cat a couple of years ago. Um, if you guys don't know, Josh recently sat down and did a podcast and he is alleging that he was at Diddy's mansion on Star Island and while at this party, he was wandering into the different rooms and he happened to come across a room and he caught these two literally playing Big Spoon, Little Spoon. Like full spoon situations, got Felix the house cat as a producer. 
Uh, Josh is claiming that after that, he did a couple of interviews. And in one of the interviews, he said that he caught Diddy doing this, Felix the house cat. And he said Diddy's people promptly reached out and told him to recant the statement. Told the story on podcast, and then his people called me like, you need to say you were joking. Like, say you're a funny guy, and like, you made it up for the yeah, news. Yeah. I like, but I, nobody did not. I see. He claimed that this happened a couple of years ago, and he is claiming that he has been saying this for the last couple of years. So I absolutely believe him. Um, I'm curious to know what you guys think about this entire situation. This is just one of the many Diddy allegations that is circulating around on the internet. Now, at this point, Diddy is known to be a wild boy, so nothing about this entire situation surprises me. I'm curious to know what you guys think about this. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Peace out. I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. In the 90s, do you understand what that's like? It was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you were 13. What were yeah, you saying? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. There were very curious things taking place. Uh huh. And I didn't necessarily understand. Uh -huh. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to Puffy Camp? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Yeah, Diddy is cooked. Diddy is cooked. Do y'all know who this man is? Yeah, it's, it's over for Diddy, bro. Not to mention he just sold all his shares. Pay attention because I'm about to explain. This guy was arrested at the airport the same time Diddy's houses were being raided, right? He was caught with illegal substances. Now hear me. Hear me listen closely. In the lawsuits, he is named as the guy who was giving Diddy the substances so that he could diddle. Everybody was screaming, he's 25, there's no way he could have did it. Well, they just caught him in the airport with bags full of it. So if the victims were telling the truth about him, what else were they telling the truth about in them lawsuits? And then they stated that TMZ's reporting that he has sold off all his shares in revolt to an anonymous buyer. What if it's 50 cents? <laughs> what if 50 cents the anonymous buyer? He don't even know, bro. An unknown person just said, hey, I'll buy it all off you when you just sold it. Bro, you, bro, you cook. You're cook. You're cook. Well, he is cooked. Well, yeah, let's get up into this. Here, hold on. Es un macho alfa, güey, pero P. Diddy todavía trató de cogérselo, güey. Pero ¿cómo te vas a tratar de coger a Mike Tyson? No chingues, lo coge un vato de Evie, no mames, güey. Lo que sí quiero decir, hermanos, es un momento de silencio por los que sí se cogió P. Diddy. El rapero Mick Mill la sufrió, amigos. ¡Ahí les va! No mames. Perra madre, güey. O sea, carnales, de ninguna manera estoy a libertad de compartir todo ese video, pero parece que le estaban dando en la madre al rapero Mick Mill. Y al señor que miraron hablando, güey, después de la pinche, <risa> después de la pinche aplauso brutal ese que se dio, que se sonaba de ¡Ah! a la verga. Ese <risa> vato, güey, era seguridad especial de Peter <risa> y él lo grabó para ganar un dinero, güey. Pero yes. maldita sea, güey, sí, lo estaban destrozando, güey, sí, yes. a la verga. <risa> Busquen el video ustedes por completo, amigos. Esta madre me dejó impactado, güey. Yeah, wey. it was disgusting. I fell in love with my best friend. One out of ten. All right. Now we're going to get up off of that. <laughs> and we're going to roll back on over here to Miss Tisa Tales, okay? Because she is the one that got the tea. Okay? Now we're going to listen to this one, and then we're going to head on up out of here. You're looking at being a drug mule. They can literally make you go away for a long, long yes, time. Yes, honey, they have Even if they can't in. get Diddy. Diddy is going down. Why wouldn't he actually speak on it? Mm. People are saying this is not going to be the first of his co-defendants to turn on him. If Lucy and Grange... Yeah, slightly. Yes, yeah, slightly. Um, he does look like um, Quince... Uh, would you say Justin? Yeah, he does. Now that I'm looking at him. Is not successful in getting out of this lawsuit, then Lucian Grange will also turn on Diddy. But baby, Lucian Grange is like, I ain't going down it with this boat. Diddy is below me. Okay. But let me just get into this now. Why is this so pressing? Because the streets are saying that the federal jury is actually being assembled. People imagine that Diddy will be arrested and charged. Uh, of course, if the uh, the grand jury actually convicts, um, well, says that they can move toward indictment. He will be arrested and charged uh, sometime 
toward the middle of May. If you guys don't know, the grand jury is 30 to 40 people. It takes a little time to assemble, but not that much. They assemble pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. They do testimony. It looks like if all things are certain, the grand jury finishes assembling. It has started to be assembled. If it finishes assembling, they are saying that Diddy's team is like stressing out, literally trying to work on the criminal defense. If it is assembled in the next week, or it is going to be assembled. I mean, if it's finishing being assembled, it's about 30 or 40 people. Um, in the next couple of weeks, it looks like the indictment will be rolling out sometime in May. And that is in the absolute latest. Again, everybody's saying what's taking so long. It takes time to pull that justice, uh, that, that, that justice with the U.S. Attorney's Office, they get only want one bite at the apple. They want to make sure when they move on you, that's it. You're done. Again, so we're looking at the federal indictment. The grand jury is... Oh, yeah. So when they bite into that apple, honey, they better get a big old nice chunk. Okay, let's go. Being assembled, we're looking at three to four weeks. Um, where are we at? Meek Mills, it is unknown if he has hired an attorney, but you know, his little boo, Robert Kraft, will take care of that for him. It looks like Diddy is paying for a lot of people's lawyers. Oddly enough, there are rumors that J-Lo is also helping Diddy out because no. Diddy is a little broke. If you guys don't know, J-Lo is kind of hooked, hooked at the hip with um, Diddy. Diddy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you guys, so back to Brendan Hall, okay? They have the search. They have the assets. They have the videos. Little Rod has just said he has a lot of evidence that he's sharing with the court. Although TMZ got the story wrong, my sources are saying that Little Rod actually did speak to, uh, to federal investigators. Now, who do you... Listen, if that man was called at the airport, there was some type of lead. There was some type of lead. Brendan just didn't get arrested because he's Brendan. There was some type of lead. Believe? Who do you know who's telling the truth? I don't know. I just know that when you look at what the feds were looking for and what the feds did and the fact that Little Rod said he's been in all three properties and he knows them. He even knows where the security rooms are and the feds knew where to go, how to hit them. Uh, 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 uh. Maybe I wouldn't be surprised that Little Rod didn't sit down and actually draw a map for them to go in. It is impossible that Little Rod's lawsuit goes so quick into what the feds did without thinking that one, Little Rod actually interviewed with them and two, Little Rod will testify if he is called. Now, peep this out. Lil Rod said that Diddy had things up in his closet. We saw that his closet was ramshacked, the rooms, the offices. All the media was taken up out of there. Every single piece of device, tablet, phones. They even confiscated his phones. We're going to be um, following this story very closely. I definitely want to thank you all so much for coming out to the Goddess Queen Tulsa show. And this concludes our broadcast. Have a wonderful night.